Hickok 45, guess what? Another gun has slithered its way onto the compound. Colt Python. Whoa. What a beauty. If you're familiar with the Colt Python, you know what I mean by calling it beautiful because it is considered one of the most beautiful handguns ever made. Let's take a closer look at it. It's, uh, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> what can I say? I've had a few myself over the years in various barrel lengths. Uh, that being a four, of course, you're looking at. Just uh, unmatched, you know, most uh, revolver fans would say. There are a lot of pretty revolvers out there and, uh, you know, attractive revolvers. But uh, the Python, uh, by most people, uh, you know, most people will just consider that the ultimate. It really, really, even if you don't like Colts for some reason, even if you would not want one, that uh, that ribbed barrel uh, is just gorgeous. And the, just the lines of the gun, it's a little bigger than a K-frame and a Smith. I don't know if it's, it's more like an L-frame, I guess. It, you might call it the original elf frame. Of course, it's a Colt. They didn't really go by those frame designations. I'm, I'm speaking Smith ease here. You know, I say elf frame or K frame. But the Python came about and uh, started production, I believe, in 1955 and then ran through uh, production to about 1999. And then afterwards, for about five or six years, uh, they were available in the Colt Custom Shop. But I believe uh, during those years they had, uh, I think it's considered an elite, an elite stamped on the barrel. So that showed that it uh, came out of the custom shop. But uh, this is an older one. This one is vintage uh, 1964, I believe. So uh, it's pretty old, pretty old. Just uh, nine years into production. Fine gun, nothing like a blue python. Although the nickel ones are pretty and the stainless ones are pretty. I've had them in six inch and four inch and stainless and nickel and blue over the years. They are a very pricey gun. They always were, always were. I remember back in the 70s that, uh, wow, the Python was nice, but just more expensive than, uh, than most people really liked. And uh, then the other gripe that we had back in the 70s was they never would make it in a 44 Magnum. But uh, they finally came out with Anaconda, another snake, you know. I don't know when that thing came out. It looked kind of like the uh, Python, but uh, probably around 80, something like that, in 44 Magnum. But it still wasn't a Python. This is considered the ultimate. It is. Now, this is a gun, uh, uh, a friend of mine runs a gun shop here in Jolton, uh, ASP, uh, Academy of Self-Protection, lent me. This is personal gun. Uh, He's a good guy. He's, we've worked out a deal where I can get guns in. My other uh, FFL dealer went out of business. Uh, I've been having a little bit of difficulty even getting in uh, T&E guns, you know, easily. So uh, they're going to do that virtually free for me, which is great. So, uh, uh, but anyway, in addition to possibly lending me a gun now and then, a gun that I don't have, maybe one I'm not interested in buying, one that I can't get as a T&E, we'll, we'll just see. But anyway, that's a, that's a great service, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, and they're not all that far away from me either. But this is uh, this is the owner's gun. He has no interest in selling it, <laughs> or I'd be possibly making offers. Uh, pretty gun, and uh, just let me take it to make a video with. So that's what we're going to do. I get a lot of requests, of course. Duh. Uh, the reason I'm interested in doing it uh, to to do a Python video, and I like them, but I'm not sure I I like them enough to buy one. I have had several over the years, and I, I've always had a love-hate relationship with the Python. Uh, I had one in six inch, just like this, made in 1960, first one I ever bought. Blue, I mean, I should have hung on to that gun. Oh, it was gorgeous, and you know, an early model, and you know how it goes. I traded it for something I had to have, but they are so gorgeous. A couple things I don't like about them are the way the cylinder ejects. It's kind of backwards to a Smith, you know. A Smith is kind of, you know, it's just natural. You push on that and, and release the cylinder. These you pull. You know, that's the Colt method, okay? And uh, the grip. I never could get comfortable with a set of grips, custom or stock. You know, these never felt as good to me. But beyond that, oh, man, are they smooth. They are like glass. That action is right out of the box. If you've never had one or held one and you don't know what I'm even talking about here, 
this this is uh, just the ultimate revolver in, in so many ways. Smooth, very smooth, very expensive, a lot of handwork uh, went into these guns. Beautiful guns. Okay, not bragging, slobbered on it enough. Let's take a couple of shots. I'm going to shoot mainly 38 Special here. Uh, I thought I'd just start out with some Magnums here, just for kicks. Haha, uh -huh. no pun intended. And uh, let's shoot some 357 Magnum. When someone says Python, they mean Colt 357 Magnum. That's the caliber. That's the gun. All right, these are 158 grain. These are who are these? PMC, uh, 158 grain, jacket of soft points. So let's just shoot a couple of these. Now I've just fired a couple of shots, but it, it seemed to be right on with some 38s I was firing. Uh, I'm not sure what to shoot here. Now these will be loud, so hold your ears. Yeah. <laughs> it's right on, all right. Woo! Let's try a couple more of the hot ones before we get uh, lighter. Oh man, that takes me back. This python is like a trip back down memory lane because, uh, I don't know, this was just such a desired gun back in the 70s. And most of us who were into collecting or shooting at that time had one. We flirted with them on some level. I'm just going to go gonging it with this thing. See if I can figure out where I need to hold on it. Caught me flinching, didn't you? That's probably why I missed the sixth shot. All right. All right, those are nice. That's nice. Got to got hit it once more, though. Can't stop on a, on a miss on the gong ever, unless it's just getting late or something. Let me get that flinch out of my system. I just held on the bottom of it there and uh, hit it. Oh yeah. I was holding six o'clock. Uh, so yeah, I see some hits near the top. I guess I was going over it. Let's try this uh, little two liter here. Well, I've got a Magnum round in there. Oh, oh well, guess I'm empty again. Okay, let's drop down to the 38 Special. That's one of the advantages of the uh, 357 Magnum. I'll put those over there as I mix them up. Is that you can shoot 38 specials in it. They're uh, less expensive. Now these are some little 130 grain rounds. You'll be able to tell the difference. So will I. They're not very, very heavy. They're uh, 130 and 38 special. Great gun to have. Now if you had someone who was a new shooter this would be a good gun to hand to them because these rounds I know for a fact are not very powerful and uh, and this is a fairly heavy gun so you're not going to get a lot of recoil <laughs> All right. Please, please. I don't reload 38 special, so I normally let them fall. Let's uh, let's see if these 38s will get out to the gong. <coughs> Excuse me.
Right. <coughs> I'm about to lose my voice here. Uh. Ah, good. Okay. Yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. As I was saying, if you have a 357 Magnum, you have a very, very versatile gun. One that'll uh, fire lots of different types of cartridges. Little 38 specials, light 38 specials, warm 38 specials. Here's some 38s that are uh, 158 grain. I'm going to shoot a few of those. And these will be a little closer to, to a 38 someone might carry. Uh, uh, carry ammo blazer, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me, 158 grain. So, we'll see if I can tell much difference here. Well, those are really uh, seated back pretty deep, aren't they? Okay. See how those feel. Yeah, this gun shoots <coughs> great. I, I think I can even see on the gong a lot of hits around the top of it. So when I was missing, I was apparently, unless I was just flinching, uh, which, you know, we all do occasionally, uh, I was I was shooting over it, I believe, on the misses, it looks like. Because I was holding up on the gong too far. Yeah, nice, nice. Let's do a little double action here. <laughs> yeah, with 38, you can really do that. I don't have my speed loaders out. Uh, as I recall, you can use uh, Smith & Wesson speed loaders for an L-frame, and they work just fine. Nice. Nice. Nothing like the action on one of these babies. They're really smooth. Very, very smooth. Uh, these grips, by the way, are custom, as you can tell. They, the guns didn't come with these grips. These are uh, Big Buck Enterprises. It's, uh, there's a label on the inside there. <clears throat> I'm gonna see if I can hit that ram over there. All right, didn't expect to knock him down. Let's try the turkey. <laughs> yeah. You can drive nails with these things. I don't know if those light 38s will knock anything else over. I'll try that pig on the right. <laughs> he just eased on over. All right, nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> It's a slow death. Well, maybe I just won't miss with this gun. Oop, flinching like that I will. Okay, that's better. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh yeah. I love that. I love that. That gun really takes me back. I miss my six inch python I had in the 70s. I bought it in 74, I guess. Whew. Wow, that is pretty. That is so pretty. Oh man, do I need to shoot it? Yeah, one more time. Okay, just one more. Let's shoot three or six more of these just for kicks. Okay, except there won't be too much kick to these. Right, let's move down here a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Still got two rounds, don't I? And I know I have a guy behind me here who thinks I have forgotten him. That's why I saved these two rounds. Don't tell him, but I'm going to turn around and take care of him. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's going to die a slow death, it looks like. <laughs> Two leaders are fun, aren't they? Sometimes they're dramatic. Other times they just sort of fall off. Well, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to shoot this gun. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous 
a gorgeous uh, revolver, there's no doubt about it. You know with a uh, Colt, the cylinder turns clockwise. Again, I, I pointed that, but yeah, I don't guess I have a Colt revolver, do I, other than the single actions. Notice when you cock it, now it's looking from the back, so your cylinder turns clockwise. Whereas on a Smith, it's coming the opposite. Just a little, little tip there I knew you were uh, worried about. So, Colt Python, oh boy, what history there is in that gun. What a gorgeous piece, and uh, I'm glad I was able to bring you one of those today and uh, take a few shots. I just love these guns. I don't know if I'm going to have to have another one or not. I think I may have the bug again. So, hope you enjoyed that. Life is good.